There we go. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the live stream. Hopefully the audio is doing okay. Um, new microphone, new settings. Hopefully it is all sounding great. How about there? I can turn it up a little bit more. How does that sound? Yeah, I'm still learning. Um, it is a Yeti X. Very nice. That's better? Okay, cool. Uh, might mean that I'll have to turn other things up when we start, but uh, <clears throat> welcome to the release stream for, uh, for version 3.10 and a little bit of 3.9. Maybe a little bit quieter. Like I said, still learning. I'm trying to get right on the edge of the yellow. Uh, so let's see how that goes. Uh, joining me for my stream today is my cat behind the blind, so um, if you hear any knocks, apparently this microphone is very, very sensitive. It's great. It means that I can sit all the way back here and uh, talk, and it's all the way up there. So this release stream, um, we skipped one for 3.9, not to say that there wasn't some cool stuff, so we will cover some of the things that happened in 3.9 as well as in 3.10, uh, which will be coming out a little bit later tonight. Or maybe tomorrow depends on how productive we are. So why don't we switch over and take a look at what we have in store? Um, so to start it up, why don't we go that place that every single person in the Pathfinder Society loves? And we will start off at our favorite museum. Um, appropriately, um, we've put on a nice theme and uh, Ezrin here is exploring the museum. So it's time to show off some of the cool stuff that we've had. Uh, so first off, one of the cool things is that we now have a roll twice rule element. So there's lots of uh, things like true strike where something happens. So I'm going to put a little arbiter out on the field and uh, we'll have arbiter and Ezrin go into combat. Um, so Ezrin being the amazing wizard that he is, rolls a natural one. Uh, we'll just say that the arbiter is confused, flies up and we will skip to Ezrin's turn. So on Ezrin's turn, uh, we'll go over to a spell sheet, and hey, he has True Strike. So we will pop out True Strike, and there is a spell effect for True Strike. We'll drop it on him. Um, he's holding onto his staff. So we'll just target and uh, make a strike. You'll notice that it rolled twice um, automatically. He doesn't need that anymore doesn't have a shield on him. Um, and you'll see that the True Strike rule element also went away. So he missed because he's Edrin, but uh, there you go. Edrin's not having a good day. No, not at all. So yeah, with uh, you'll have to replace uh, all of these that use it, but uh, that works. Or say the Pugwumpy's Unluck Aura, it'll have one that you drag the effect onto your players. They'll roll and it'll automatically force all the rolls to go twice. Um, so that's a cool one. Now, what I do want to show you is one of the other really cool things. So prepared spells have been a pain because you have to drag, drop, and and it was just a mess to try and manage these. Well, now your spell book is actually a spell book. So you can drag um, your spells in, and then let's say you want to bring something up to a higher level. Um, you literally just take it. So we can cast Burning Hands at level 3. And so you just have your whole spell book at level, dragging things over, um, hiding it up. And I think think if I'm right, we also don't have to change things. You can just drag right over top now, so you don't even have to delete the things that are in there. So you can put all of your cantrips in, you can put pretty much everything in, it'll be a little bit lighter. We still don't recommend it because it'll still be stored on your actor just a little bit of a different way. Um, if you don't mind bloating your actor severely and forcing everyone to load every spell in history, then yes, you can put them all on. Definitely do not recommend, but this is uh, one of the really cool new features. So oh, let's say Ezrin's not just having a bad day with the Arbiter. Let's say he's having a really bad day and, oh, an adult bronze dragon shows up. Because, you know, that's something that definitely just kind of happens to Ezrin because he's just that unlucky. Well, Ezrin was smart. And ahead of time, one of the other things that he did was he opened up our Compendium browser and he said, hey, I think that I might encounter a dragon later. So I want a Dragon Slayer shield. So if Ezrin's selected, you'll notice over here, there's a little coin button. Uh, Ezrin has a thousand gold and, and 
uh, you click the buy item button and there you go. The gold is deducted and Ezra now has a Dragon Slayer shield, which we can equip. Um, so it is now equipped on him. And of course the adult dragon, he's going to have frightful presence. So Ezra will have to try and save. Again, bad day. He needs to roll something like an 18 with the... Uh, no, he rolled a six. That doesn't help. I don't know if we can roll higher. No, he's just going to keep failing. Oh, I will say in my practice, he did roll a natural 19. It was pretty awesome. Oh, there. He only failed by two that time. Um, but the Dragon Slayer shield itself now has... Um, so that with the trait dragon, uh, will saves will get a plus two bonus. Uh, more for our Ezrin fans, if you go and look into our spells, one of the big pushes that uh, we did in the last release was adding icons for everything. I know it's a small thing, but uh, it's a whole lot of work. We're now pretty much complete with icons. Uh, there's still some pieces of equipment that need to be done, but um, it's definitely much better. So if you go to your characters and you have spells without icons at this point, Feel free to go back and replace them. You probably want to do it later. Does it auto-invest when purchased? No, because Dragon Slayer Shield does not need to be... Oh, I know why. Oops. Um, Ezra has to raise the shield for this to work. Actually, I don't need him out here anymore, do I? The shield's raised. That's when this works. Oh. Still doesn't help. Uh, but no, when you purchase something, it's not even held. It's just brought to your inventory. Yeah, apparently Ezrin's having a really bad night in rolling. In the practice, he rolled fantastically, but not now. Um, so yeah, spells now have icons. Another thing people complained about... Um, so we'll look here. Um, so here's our total wealth, 1303.09. Uh, for the sake of it, I'm going to give the character one more copper piece to make it an even... 13.03.1 so let's give Ezrin some arrows and the problem with arrows was it these weren't being computed right when it came to wealth it didn't really matter above level one but people did care well so here we've now gone to 1303.2 and as I expend arrows I lose a little bit of my wealth one copper each time so if you go to the actual items um, it's now one silver per whatever unit so it will now do the math correctly um, the the bulk still works uh, the same way that it did before, but now your total wealth should be accurate. Um, other things that we've done, uh, a lot more automation to the Ancestry feats. Uh, everything up to Ganzi has had rule elements automated uh, and, and added to it. So all of those Ancestry feats and features. Um, Shandian is back, so hey, awesome. Uh, <laughs> It's been a while since she was contributing to the system, and when we did uh, the initial data entry, it was mostly just her and I, so really glad to have her back and working on this again. Mostly for the nostalgia. I mean, also for the adding and doing a ridiculous amount of uh, data entry with rule elements. So if you are playing anything from A to Ganzi, you might want to drag in some of your feats because there's a lot more automation for those. Uh, some stuff that you won't see in the back end, uh, we have completely uh, started to rebuild so that will be compatible for version 10. We are not quite there yet, so please do not upgrade to version 10. This is me saying do not do that thing, but a lot of the groundwork has been laid. Uh, another thing that we have done, uh, speaking with rules and rule elements, we've started to make it a little bit easier to use. So now if you want to create a new rule element, here's all the different types. Um, it doesn't put anything specific in other than it makes the, the bracket for you. You don't have to do this, uh, but you can add in that and it puts in the key and at least you started off on the right foot Will we extend this to make it even easier and put in templates or blanks? I don't know. We'll see uh, But for now, uh, it's a little bit more friendly. It's not perfect. It's not where we want it to be yet uh, But it's it, it'll make it harder to do things uh, incorrectly 
That being said, if you know your code uh, or you've copied from the wiki, you can just pop up the top one, replace this, and it'll change the name. One of the other cool things that we can do now, um, so you saw up here, there's the 90 foot aura, you know, we can pop it down and there it is, uh, but that's off of an ability. But we can now do this directly into uh, into chat and, and pop up those templates. So if you're a GM and you just need something quick, so you can do, if you know the code, uh, at template and then uh, type, we'll say it's a cone and then uh, size will be 15 and, or distance there we go distance equals 15 so now you can pop up your 15 foot cone um, let's say you need to do a check just off the top of my head uh, we'll make it a reflex save uh, the DC will be 20 and we want it to be a basic uh, reflex save you can now type these all in and voila. Hey, has been succeeded at something. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, the template buttons and uh, at check buttons can all be done from here. You can also do them from notes. So for those of you who want to do a series of checks, I use them a lot in Pathfinder Society. Writing them all out is a pain. Now I can do them in text, post them in, and it'll put all of them in one message, which is something that I absolutely love. Uh, but let's continue on with Ezrin's really bad no good day. And since he is here, obviously there is going to be a skeleton. Um, I've made this so that even Ezrin can win this battle. Of course, the skeleton's going to roll amazing. So it'll step up. It'll target Ezrin. Um, let's see if it can hit Ezrin. Nope. Well, there you go. Ezrin didn't get hit. Um, so, Ezrin's turn. He's mad. Got his staff out. Uh, wants to show him what's what. Knows that bludgeoning will be great against this guy. So, hey, let's cast True Strike on ourselves again. And let's give him a two-handed wallop. There we go. Critical hit. Uh, I might have stacked the deck because his AC was one, but, you know, Ezra needs a win. Fantastic. 18 points of damage. Oh, well, if we look at the skeleton soldier, it has explosive death, which is a death effect. So if you go and create effects now, uh, under details, you can toggle on a death note. And what it'll do is it'll pop up the information in here. So the skeleton exploded and uh, adjacent creatures take this. So Ezrin, we can say, hey, Ezrin, um, it exploded. We need you to make a reflex save. So Ezrin will make his reflex save, critically succeed. So he definitely takes exactly zero of the two slashing damage. So this is one of those cool things that uh, is coming out in this one that is uh, a nice feature. It was actually out in 3.9, but uh, we've started to push it out to the compendiums now. So a lot of this will be automatic. If you have stuff in the world, it won't by default use it. So you need new ones in. Uh, and, and that's true. Death Notes only, you'll see it's blue. It only goes to the GM so that the GM, it, it's a reminder of the GM more than anything. So you can do your storytelling. And like I said, you can pop out the reflex uh, to chat by posting to chat like I did. And then uh, they can roll their save. You can roll the damage and apply it as necessary. Um, and so those are the big features from 3.10 and, uh, and 3.9. I do have uh, one other thing that's upcoming to show off. So this is something that's not out yet. It's still in development. It is not completed yet, but let's switch over to another scene. So right here, uh, it's uh, this is a test world. So let's create a new actor. And here's our new actor of fun. Now you'll notice the ability scores. That looks a little bit different, does it? So let's throw on, let's say, well, uh, obviously we want to be a goblin for our heritage. Uh, we'll be a charhide goblin, because why not? Our class, I think we know all goblins are rogues. And uh, they're thieves, let's be honest. And then we will choose a background. Oh. For Academy Dropout. 
Now, why did we pick those? Mostly because they're random. So let's go and check out our ability scores. Um, so here, Goblin Ancestry, we get Dexterity and Charisma, and we lose two points from Wisdom, and we get one free choice. So I could make it a Smart Goblin, um, or I could balance off my Wisdom and, and make that null. Let's say I want to add in a Voluntary Flaw. I can take two penalties to something, and then uh, give myself a boost to somewhere else, because I want to be a really wise uh, Goblin. Academy Dropout, well, I can only pick uh, one of these, either Intelligence or Charisma. Charismatic Goblin, and then I get one free choice. Um, let's take Dexterity. Uh, as a Rogue, uh, Thief, we'll go Dexterity, and then at level one, I get my four free boosts. One, two, three, four. And then I can be complete. So there you go. There's my, my modifiers all built up for me. Again, this isn't in yet. This is definitely a work in progress, but I think it looks pretty cool. I think we will take some of the potential designs, post this out to uh, the Discord for community content, but I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's uh, it, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. So let's um, let's hop back over to the uh, the Foundry instance for just a sec. So we do have some cool stuff that's coming out in the near future that I'd like to highlight before I get on to the Abomination Vault stuff. First, uh, we have recently had a release, and the next one's coming, of uh, of Outlaws of Alkenstar. So I'm pretty pleased to have been involved a little bit. I've done some of the audio for this using some of Sirenscape's awesome assets. Uh, this is being done by Sigil Entertainment. Uh, if you would like to purchase Volume 1, it is out now, and you can do so here. Volume 2 will be coming shortly. Uh, release date is in the near future. Um, I don't know that it's been 100% confirmed. Should be coming out uh, soon. And up, an update for uh, Punks and a Powder Keg did come out. That's added a couple new extra features. Uh, because people had questions about the audio, and because I made the audio and don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to audio, I think it sounds good, but apparently it was a little bit too quiet for most GMs. So I boosted the audio on some tracks, um, rejigged one sort of thing. We added some extra sound effects. Lots of cool new stuff in the update. So if you're playing Outlaws of Alkenstar, you'll have to re-import the adventure. Just be careful when you do that. Uh, it will pretty much take away all the actors in place. Apparently it leaves the dead actors dead, but know where your, your party's tokens were standing so that you can move them back to where they were. I also think it'll probably get rid of the Fog of War, so just be aware of that as GM. You might want to go in and if they're partially through a map, just drag the tokens where they used to be and they'll never know the difference. Uh, so yeah, Outlaws of Alkenstar, definitely available now on Paizo's website. Um, the other thing that has recently come out is uh, more to our Battle Zoo. So Battle Zoo Ancestries came out this week to complement uh, the Battle Zoo Bestiary. So if you're interested in this, you can go and purchase it. Um, if you purchase the Bestiary, you get cool extra creatures with full art, like this Sapphire Drake or the Phase Tiger, both very neat. Uh, otherwise, with the uh, Battle Zoo Ancestries, you can build your own cool characters. So here we have uh, Calisandrix, uh, which is from a game that some of the devs are playing in now. Uh, so you can see his full token artwork. Uh, but uh, well, he has a dragon. He literally has the dragon ancestry. This is what you, what you buy. Um, you get all your additional sort of dragon feats. Um, oh, ah can't click the right button. Um, so lots of normal stuff from your class, but then when it comes to the ancestry, they're down here. So all the stuff that gets added on. And then if you're special, you can also do things like uh, have macros that will switch between your forms. So there's his humanoid form. So again, all these feats are built in. And did I enable it on this world? I don't even remember. Uh, nope, I didn't turn it on. So I won't show you what all the compendiums look like because I did not turn them on. Uh, but yeah, that's available now. Uh, feel free to go and purchase. Like I said, the module for the Battles You Ancestries has just come out. It was made by our two data development leads um, with the Rule for Combat team. So very high quality, very, very cool stuff. Uh, so if you buy this, 
the Ancestries have not been converted for 5e yet, but the Battle to Bestiary for 5e, I believe, came out, if I remember right. So if you want to play as a dragon there, or as a, um, not a half-dragon or dragonkin, but a real dragon, this is where you want to go. Um, so, coming up very, very soon, we have the Mercenary Marketplace. Uh, so this is coming out May 16th. Uh, this is an entire book that is just absolutely full of um, templates that allow you to shift uh, NPCs, add, add different quirks, and comes with a, a bunch of built-in characters. So I have three Mercenary Alchemists. Here's one pre-built for levels 1 to 3, so he's a second level character. Um, one that's built at level 8. And one that's built at level 18. So there's characters that are sort of templated from level 1 to 18. You can add in all sorts of extra features to them. Uh, there is a very cool promotional video that was done by everyone's favorite uh, GM Steve uh, from Recall Knowledge. And so if you'd like to watch that, that is now in the Twitch chat. Um, if you would like to, uh, to purchase this module when it comes out on the 16th, this is the, um, the itch.io store where you can go and buy. Um, so it should be kind of neat. I uh, can't wait to see it. And then the last uh, non-abomination vaults demo that I'm going to do is Sinclair's Library. Um, so this one is by Nonat. Um, it's uh, it was just funded, and not only is it funded, it's broken a hundred thousand uh, dollars. So it's it's hit two thirds of the stretch goals that they've listed so far. Um, it will definitely be released on Foundry VTT. Um, there's going to be 120 new options for players, more than 150 NPCs for GMs. Um, so if you'd like to go and kickstart it, I think it's open for another couple of weeks, uh, you can do so here. And uh, so that's uh, all of the cool stuff that's coming out. Like you can, As you can see, like it's becoming a pretty big thing. We've got another uh, Outlaws of Alkenstar book coming. Uh, nothing else has been announced, but I, I can say that Paizo is pretty happy with the reception so far. Uh, and yeah, it's a lot of creators are making content for the PF2E system, so please go out and support them. There's a lot of really cool options that do exist. And now we'll get to uh, Abomination Vaults. So I'm sure this is what everyone's been waiting for and really wants to see. Uh, so here we go. Here is our map of Otari, and this is what uh, I'll be showing off today. Uh, so maybe I'll just turn off. So all of the, the journal entries are in to the same sort of quality that you would expect. Um, very, very nicely done. Uh, it, it's, it's just so pretty. But this is the stock map. Um, wh why don't we switch over to the Otari map? That uh, will be the Foundry exclusive version. So this is a work in progress. The, the final version may be a little bit different. But uh, talk about making your city come alive. You, know, you can actually, it, it's its to the scale that you can actually have your, your characters come and literally walk down. You know, here's everyone's unfortunate thirsty alpaca after a bunch of Pathfinder Society agents visited it early in Season 1. It was just absolutely destroyed. Um, and you know we can even do things like you know, there's the fog fen. I mean seriously, you can just sort of keep zooming in. That's what Narchi did here. I don't know that you could quite shrink your tokens to play, but who needs to actually go there when you can just stay on the main map? Literally make your characters have to walk a half hour down the road. I mean, come on. Seriously, ropes on the, the dock? So... 
so yeah, very excited. This module is coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, I've already uh, pre-purchased the hardcover so that I get the free PDF as a subscriber because I am definitely going to be changing my game over to be using this. Unfortunately, I can't show you any more than that because I promised that I wouldn't. Um, but uh, but yeah, that is uh, that is it for uh, for the the stream for today. Uh, other than that, if anyone has any questions, uh, there is lots that we have planned. So I, I gave you sort of a sneak peek of the uh, the ability scores. I don't know if we'll put that in before PaizoCon. PaizoCon is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, we want to make sure that everything's nice and stable so that everything runs well. PaizoCon two years ago had four or five foundry tables. Last year it was just over 20%. This year I think we're near about 40% of tables running PF2E. So that's, that's a pretty substantial jump. Um, it's kind of sort of, of goes to show. Uh, how much for the Abomination Vaults module? I have literally no idea. What I can tell you, what we do know, uh, I will say that ISO is the one who sets any sort of discount for PDF. It will be discounted off of the hardcover PDF, not the three module version. That has nothing to do with Foundry. If you would like that changed, feel free to go and talk to Paizo because uh, they're the ones who will be making that decision. I would do prices if I could. I absolutely can't though, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somewhere less than $100. Excellent. There you go. You, you now have an upper ceiling. Action-based spells getting tackled yet. I have no idea what that means. If you mean that it does a, a certain number of things with a, a different number of actions. Um, there, there's not a whole ton that we've done with that. There is some back-end work going on, on spells. Um, I don't know that it'll that will have what you're looking for anytime soon, though. Oh, that, that's true. As a physicist, I can answer. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the module for Abomination Vaults will cost one. Uh, one in the units of the cost of Abomination Vaults. It's very simple to reduce problems that way. So other than that, I think that's all I have for you for tonight. Um, stuff that is sort of on the horizon that we're thinking about doing. Um, I know that Shark has already started talking about doing things with auras. It's not coming out in version 10, so as is Pathfinder Tradition, maybe we'll give it a shot and see if we can do it on our own. Lots of other things that we would really like. Is that real Birds of Ivan Birds? Um, no. So the, the background track I'm playing right now is Noble Gardens by Michael Gelfie. And because I keep forgetting, uh, Michael Gelfie, really amazing audio. Um, it's kind of the stuff that I sort of use exclusively. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you would like to purchase his stuff, he has a wonderful band campsite. I think they've just released a, a couple of other things. And uh, like I said, the, the very first track that I played is Patreon exclusive. Definitely a Patreon worth subscribing to. And uh, I think that he's got some really cool stuff planned in the near future. Um, so with that, thank you all for paying attention. Uh, will more inventor support be coming out like armor and weapon innovations? Eventually, yes. Uh, we need to, well, before we do all of that, it's the same as with, with talismans. We want to make items that are embeddable within other objects that will pass rule elements down. That's really the way to go forward with a lot of these until we design sort of a structure that is a lightweight item that can be latched onto other items. We probably won't do too much there, but as soon as we have that, all the runes will be redone. And then when you put a flaming rune or 
uh, a fearsome rune on, it'll automatically propagate all of that forward. Um, if you want to do talismans or relics or armor weapon innovations, all of those you'll be able to drag on and it should just work. Again, we could do something that's sort of hacky, but we would just be undoing it in the near to midterm future. So it's something that I'm not going to try and promise. Right now you can sort of put things together. It's just the weapon and armor innovations are, are weird. It, it's actually normal for Pfizer, so definitely weird. So other than that, um, if there are no other questions, because obviously I wasn't paying attention to any of the chat so much while I was doing the talk, is, if anybody has a stream where you can go and raid, because apparently that's a thing that I need to learn how to do, feel free to let me know. Is there a channel somewhere on, uh, on Twitch that's currently streaming a Foundry game? Preferably PF2E, but I'm happy to spread the love. Oh, I guess I could show one last thing. That's right. I forgot about Acid Flash. Um, give me a second. To pull everything back up. There's our poor little Arbiter. Uh, I don't know if I put a new copy of Acid Splash on Ezrin or not. So there you go, it's the we've got the heightened levels. A quick insert is not built in, no. I uh, I just have quick insert enabled because it's very helpful to have on streams. to work. Well, maybe we can't go and raid someone then if there's nobody out who's playing. So someone should uh, someone should tell people that whenever I plan a release stream within 24 hours, they should definitely just schedule an impromptu game so I can raid them at the end. No, I don't really want to take all the Foundry people to go to Roll20. That seems... Impolite. Well, in that case, we can go and look at some otters. Um, so for anyone who would like, uh, we will go and have some otters. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your evening. It's been a pleasure to talk with you all and look forward to seeing you next stream.